Welcome to the Elite Rugby Band to Curry Cup Grand Final where we have Alex's Western Province taking on Ants Sharks. Quick look at how the team's shaped up. Alex's Western Province top of the log. Three wins out of five games. One draw to the Cheetahs. One loss to the Blue Bulls. Points difference of 30 and final standings. Three points clear ahead of the rest. 15 points. Heading into the Grand Final with a two game win streak. Ants Sharks on the other hand sneaking in right at the end. Three wins, no draws, but two losses to Western Province in the Western Province and Eastern Province in the group stages. Uh, surprisingly a negative points difference despite making the grand final. Um, having beaten Adams Bulls, I assume, on head-to-head -head basis. I don't make the rules. And a negative one losing streak. Um, having faced up against Western Province just one week ago in the final round. We move now to the game which will be played, of course. Forsyth Bar Stadium and will be 15 minutes long instead of 10. Forsyth Bar, uh, overcast, not that it matters, hard difficulty, 15 minutes, nighttime game, what more could you ask for? Let's head into the match. Well, Forsyth Bar in all its glory, beautiful conditions of course, the zoo uh, in full voice we hope. The sharks come trotting out in their traditional kit, looking very strong. And we'll take a quick look at the teams. Western Province, no real star players in the forward pack. Franco Mostert and Marcel Katia leading strongly. But in the backs, Andre Pollard, second highest point scorer of this competition with 42. And Jan Serfentain pairing him in the midfield with four tries, most out of any player. Chesson Colby at fullback, bit of a waste of a first round pick if you ask me. Hasn't really done very much so far. And Sharks on the other hand, impressive combination of youth and skill and experience. Arkeus Neyman, JJ van der Mescht, but of course, uh, ja uh, Carl Usadi with two tries in the front row. Peter Steph to Toy, two tries at 200 meters. And this man, Mani Lebok, leading the team in meters run and points. 445 meters run, 29 points. And he's getting us off to a good start here with a short kickoff, which is gathered aggressively by Western Province and immediately a run up the middle by Chris Kuti, I think. Finally taken down by uh, Andre Esterhaz in the midfield, but Province immediately on the front foot. Lots of space to the right. They get the ball out to West Coast. He's got rocket boots. Dylan Lade's not always been great on defense, but he managed to get, him, get his man this time. Province pile into the right to secure possession. It is good. not going to come out cleanly. Sharks with the turnover at a crucial moment in this game. Setting up a rolling ball on their 22. Will they look to exit by the boot? Or will they take the game to Western Province? Well, they're going blindside. An interesting choice. And immediately hammered into touch, it looks like. No, the camera angle has fooled me. Turn over Western Province somehow, and let's see if they can reignite the exciting rugby that they started this match with. Securing possession on the Sharks 22. Line of Quinier now with Andre Pollard, I believe, splitting the line like a melon. Taken down. Both teams are reluctant to commit too much to that ruck. There's a huge blind side for Province, but they won't take it. They're going to keep it tight amongst the forwards for some reason. Uh, they still have the ball, so there's time for someone to bring a bit of sense to all of this. Looked like Pierre Skuman playing. Oh, Sutu Jesse with a long bar pass to his left. Duan van der Merwe puts on a bit of footwork, almost runs out of the dead ball line, but he gets the first points of the game in the corner for Western Province. And that brings the score to 5-0. Peter Steph to not impressed with his team's defensive effort there. Roscoe Speckman looks confused, understandably so. He was nowhere on that defensive play. Chris Pliddy at scrum half it was. Lionel Crenier, Sutu Jesse with an amazing pass right, uh, right to left. Dylan Lades was physically present for that but uh, mentally and emotionally perhaps already with one foot in France or wherever he's going I, I don't care Duan van der Merwe well he's been a good player for the Western Province so far this year I believe two tries scored that brings his tally to three and um, a good tally for the angry picklet as he is known Andre Pollard of course as I mentioned earlier the second highest point scorer on 42 I believe Elton Yanchis is the highest on 44 45 but it wouldn't surprise me to see Andre Pollard split the uprights with this effort, taking his total tally to 44. An interesting move from him from 10 to 12, one I think that has borne fruit for Western Province. Um, but with only eight minutes gone on the clock, everything is, of course, still very much up in the air. Speaking of up in the air, Mani Lebok is going to get us going. Another short restart. This time Western Province attack it through Chris Clutty. Or perhaps Piers Kuman, I'm not sure. Or retain Reinach gets a short to run Guerta. Marcel could see with an incisive run, but only beats one man. Lots of space on the right now. 
wide to Wes Gerson, I believe, or is that a forward? I can't tell. Oh, here gets the offload. I don't know who that is, but he's doing a great job. I think it was Franz Herbert. That's the most he's ever run in a rugby match in his, in his life. And he's uh, pinged for holding on, which seems very, very harsh. Um, quite frankly, I don't know how he put that much distance between himself and his support runners, but maybe they were surprised as we were. Sharks, of course, kicking to the corner. Well, not the corner, but to the side. Good touch finder, relieving a bit of pressure, but really the Sharks need to find a way back into this game, and it's not going to come through territory. It needs to come from possession, and young Dylan Richardson is going to have to try and secure that for them with this line-out. He's got some good jumpers in Sneemann and Fundamesht. Does find someone. Now let's see what the impressive Sharks backline can produce. Release. Nothing on that effort. Lots of space on the blind side. Fafta Klerk sees it, but doesn't Not get releasing. the ball away. Oh, ping the other way. Fafta Klerk with an interesting shade of hair color uh, is consoled by Peter Steftatoy, who has a better understanding of the laws than he does. What will Western Province decide to do here? They are in kicking distance, but they've decided to go aggressive. It's still early days, so you wonder whether that'll come back to bite them, but with their, their try scoring form, it's no surprise to see them back themselves under fantastic uh, conditions, of course, here at Forsyth Bar. Akafana Merva has not had a good record of line-out throwing. Let's see if he can uh, brush up on that in this all-important game. He cannot. Ball is stolen by Sharks on their own 5-meter. Impressive effort in the air, I think, by Van der Mesh to Arkes Neyman. Get the ball on, and here we go. Roscoe Speck magic. Nice little inside pass to Fuck Clerk. He's found a bit of space, but Cheson Colby wraps him up. Sharks players pouring into that ruck to secure. Oh, fantastic inside ball to Penny Steph to Toy. Release. And they still have possession. Fuff to Clerk, what can he make happen here? It's a great line to run there by the Sharks, but it's been turned over by Western Province. Jason Colby puts a step on, gets it wide immediately to Andre Pollard, or is it Young Surfentain? He's going all the way. Dylan Lays rushes up, but no time to catch the last man. I don't know who that is. It looks like Lionel Crenier. It's either Lionel Crenier, Andre Pollard, or Young Surfentain. I can tell you that much, and immediately see hands in the head from Archie Sneeman. Sharks not happy to concede under those sorts of circumstances. It looks like it was Serfentain who made the break, getting the ball off to his, Pollard, uh, his partner Pollard. And I think without doubt that puts Pollard as the top point scorer in the competition and deservedly so. In fact, one might even argue he's been the MVP. Really good awareness there from the Western Province line, just getting the ball wide. It started with Cheslin Colby doing probably the first thing I've seen him do on attack all season. Uh, and then some good awareness by the centre pairing to find each other with a, a bit of space on the outside. Dylan Lades perhaps guilty of rushing up too quickly. Well, ready to be straightforward kick for Andre Pollard. It makes no mistake about it. And things are not looking great for Ants Sharks here in uh, Forsyth Bar. The crowd are pretty chuffed. They look like they might be supporting the Sharks by the state of the flags in the crowd. But they seem to just be happy to be watching live rugby again, as am I. Manny Lebok, another short uh, restart, giving away possession again to Western Province. And you have to wonder whether it isn't time for a change of tactics for the Sharks. Western Province looking blindside, I think. Krubis Reinach puts on a bit of footwork, gets the offload. Unable to uh, make the, the clean line break. The Leds has rushed up on that. If the Stormers can get a line break here, they may find the Sharks wanting. Here we go, Pierce Grimman, I think that is, with the, the shaggy head of hair. Couldn't get the offload, takes it to ground. There is space on the blind side, and they do go blind. That looks like Ruan Puerta getting it away to Duan van der Merwe. Good defense by the Sharks, however. Going blind side again. Uh, Andre Pollard with an impressive broken tackle, getting it off to Quivers Ryan, I believe. Not releasing, and that would be the penalty. Okay, it was uh, Line of Kunir, I think, who was at fault, and uh, just consoled there by Ruan Puerta. He knows what, it like, what it's like to be penalized, but normally not in this jersey. Buddy Lebok doing the sensible thing. Touch finder. And uh, once again, I think it is imperative for the Sharks and they seem to be aware of the fact that they keep th their hands on the ball. Dylan Richardson will be responsible for that. Will he target the front ball? Goes to the middle. Good secured position. They're now going to maul it up um, as they head towards the Western Province 22. Making good ground though. Their forwards are... Quite impressive against a relatively small Western Province pack. And now they look to go wide. Manny Lubok unleashing Andre Esterhazen. On his left is going to be Francois Fenta. He's had a good game. He looked to find uh, Roscoe Speckman on the outside, but couldn't get the ball, uh, ball off. They still have possession. 
Looks like he was shaping for a kick there. And star man, Peter Steph Toy, putting on all the moves, making an incision into the uh, incursion rather into the Western Province 22. Securing ball, going blindside again. And they are going to keep hammering away at this Western Province defense. They haven't been asked to do too much on defense so far today. Hachiba Daimani looked like he could have gone to the outside. Mani Libok takes it up instead. Province bravely entering the ruck, but to no avail. Short ball now. Achia Sneeman finding his uh, forward partner. We're now going to go blind again. That looked almost like a high tackle from Western Province, but the ref hasn't picked it up. And really, Province are not being able to contest these rucks at all well. Kalu Sadi playing a scrum half there. They've got it out to Roscoe Speck, but he's the danger man. Just before going out in touch, he manages to offload to Ron Ackerman. And the Sharks are making very good progress just up in the, the Western Province five yard line. And Peter Steph to Toy, if anyone's going to break it open, it's him, but he passes it off to Carly Sadi. Oh, nice. Province guilty of not releasing, slowing it down a little bit there. Speckman coming in. Here we go. Off to Notche. Notche has found the space required to score a try. Great form by him, carrying it forward from the Super Rugby season. And, uh, well, it was a matter of time there, I think, before the Western Province dam broke. Sharks were able to string together a good series of possession and I think they showed what they can do when they have the ball in hand contrary to the opening 10 or 12 minutes of the game where they were really just on defense excellent interplay there by the forwards and the backs and good presence of mind by Sukubos and Ocha to sit out on the, on the right wing side of the field where he could exploit a bit of a mismatch I didn't actually see who the last defender was there for province looks like Duan van der Merwe was guilty of ball watching and uh, yep, you can see he's a bit disappointed with himself so, fantastic try there by the former Western Province man, Skubu Zinache. And Mani Le Lebok will look to add to his 29 points for the, for the season. Not the easiest of kicks, but uh, one you would expect him to get over. And he does so. Well, I think that has brought the Sharks right back into this game. 14 points to 7. Lots of time still on the clock, of course. Five minutes to go until half time. Both teams will be wanting to, I think, take stock of where they've where they've been this half. But uh, Andre Pollard with the kickoff for Western Province. And there is still enough time for one of the teams to do something. Taken up by the, by, there by JJ van der Mesh, the impressive youngster. Sharks do secure possession. Running it up by Arkes Neyman. Skubuzinacha joins him. Oh no, not Skubuzinacha, it must have been Oxenchair. Well, quickly, quickly up on Andre Esterhead. Oh, nice. oh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> not yet playing scrum half. They do choose to uh, kick it up, but they may have misjudged the clock here because there's still a minute and a half left for Western Province. They've got a relatively strong attacking position in the Sharks' half. And if Akip Finamurva can finally land one of his line out throws, we may see another scoreboard update before we go into half time. Well, it's a miracle Akip Finamurva makes a line out throw. But the province boys are very cavalier about letting that ball go to ground. However, Reinach has secured it. Passes it off. There's lots of space on the outside. Sits Manjezi. He gets it off to Wes Hursen. Wes Hursen offloading to Andre Pollard, I believe. Looking for the dummy on Dylan Lades, but Dylan Lades is solid as a rock on defense. Uh, Lades guilty sometimes of um, somewhat poor positioning and in the last game will have rude his, his uh, discipline. But um, here we have the territory stats and and possession really telling the tale. 73 68 in favor of Western Province. Two penalties conceded, however, uh, so definitely some frailties in the defensive line in terms of discipline. But uh, six line breaks to the Sharks, two, and I think it's fair to say that the scoreboard is an accurate reflection of how the game has gone so far. But uh, as anyone can tell you, the game takes 80 minutes, if not more, and there's still lots of rugby to be played. Province now turn to have a short kickoff taken up by Peter Steph Toy, the star player for the Sharks in the season so far, but it's immediately turned over, and Western Province have yet another attacking opportunity down the right-hand side, sells the dummy. Ruan Buerta makes a great run, but uh, unfortunately he's just too tall to stay in bounds there, and um, while the Province will be happy with the early signs on attack, they would have liked to have strung a few more phases together. Dylan Richardson will look to provide a strong ball to the Sharks' backs to get out of their own uh, 22 and very nearly stood it, but uh, they are able to get it away. In fact, it looks like they're attacking. And really, why not? It's Rugby Challenge 3, anything's possible. They secure their own ball. There's a lot of players on the blind side here. Fuck to wants to go that way. He cho instead chooses to go himself and then kicks after running outside of 22, I believe. I'm not sure whether that was direct or not. I usually need uh, the commentators to tell me that, but I am the commentator and I don't know. He was out on the floor uh, outside of the 22, so 
big mistake from Fluffy Clerk. Can Akafin and Merva capitalize on this with a solid line out throw? Yes, he can. That was probably too good and missed the lock jump altogether. Line out Crenier manages to pick it up, but he couldn't find a support runner, even though there was lots of space in front of him. And here, Western Province come. Krubis Reinach, a little bit of a dart from him. Province nice. swamping the ruck to make sure they secure it. And they do have numbers on the left if they want to go that way. It looks like Pollard all the way left to do in front of Merva. That will be his second of the game. Dylan Lades, well, that was almost a carbon copy on the first try, to be honest. Um, again, Lades was there, um, represented by pixels on the screen, but there was no soul in his defensive effort, I think. Quite good to see Pierre Scrimmon filling in at scrum half after Krubus right up with the ball up. And, well, who'd have thought it? France Malherbe with the last pass assist. Dwayne uh, van der Merwe almost running out there, actually, but uh, Rugby Challenge's three animations are kind. Yeah, you can see here. Chiba Daimani, not experienced as a winger, guilty of marking the second last man, Dylan Lades, defensive effort, well, I think the less said about that, the better, to be honest. Got Finn Merva, two tries in the game so far, and uh, an impressive return to South African shores for the future Scottish international, perhaps. And then Pollard, adding to his tally for the game, for the season, no wind of course here at Forsyth Bar, so no excuse to miss those. He doesn't. 21 points to 7. Western Province over the Sharks. 47 minutes on the clock. 30, 33, 32 minutes and 10 seconds. Coming down to go. Money Levok, will he go deep this time? Does go short, but not challenged by the Sharks. I said to put Jesse's able to gather that with no pressure, other than, of course, the world player of the uh, Peter Stanton toy. And that's been turned over by the Sharks, so miraculously played by them, really. They immediately go wide. Lots of space here for Fenter. Hachiba Daimani. Oh. Well, he's got the physical attributes, but perhaps not the spatial awareness as he steps into touch there. He's had a good season for his debut on the wing, uh, but still perhaps a bit raw. Van der Merwe want to build on this. West Province still in a dangerous position if they do give away the ball. Which they almost do, but Province are able to secure it. Line of Grenier popping inside to run Puerta. Now comes Pierre Skuman. And that's been turned over once again. Impressive work by the Sharks there. They go immediately wide to Peter Steftatoy. Ranging up on the outside. Is that Peter Steftatoy? I don't know. Uh, looks like the Sharks have secured this. There's plenty of space on the blind side. That's Peter Steftatoy. Must have been run up from earlier. And contested on the ground by Western Province. They do succeed in slowing it down. So the defensive line can form up. But they are screaming for the ball on the outside. And really, it's going to take a miracle to stop Achiba Damani from this close. And that miracle is Duan van der Merwe five yard line for the for the Sharks now and uh, they're just lining up Super Buzinaccio wants a second Peter Steff Totoya hanging about on the fringes he's looking for possession next it comes to him the playmaker in the sixth jersey passing it off to uh, Dylan not Richardson releasing. not releasing and a foolish error there by the young hooker slash flank uh, perhaps showing a bit of immaturity and you really wonder whether uh, it was a pivot to Peter Steff Totoya would not have been better served by going left all the way to his proven try scorers well, fantastic touch finder there by Hunter Pollard, and just like that, the Sharks are starved of yet another scoring opportunity. Roscoe Speckman, well, he voices his unhappiness at the Bulls two years ago, lack of try scoring opportunities, and you have to wonder whether he's improved the situation by joining the Sharks. Akvan Merva doing what he does best, losing line out possession to the Sharks. They get a very good strong shove on, and I uh, don't know why Ron Bird is escorting that ball backwards, but it seems to have ground to an organic halt. The Sharks now have plenty of numbers on the right, on, uh, going left, sorry. They take it in instead, Cheson Colby rushing up. Dylan Richardson trying to make amends for his earlier mistake. This ball may have been turned over, Province with strong presence at the ruck there, but they've committed so many players to it, they don't really have anyone to take it on outside. Or do they? Andre Pollard all the way to that Wes Kursen. Wes Kursen sells the dummy to the, uh, to the sideline, but it doesn't work. Dylan Lades with a strong defensive effort. Was right up. Well, he had numbers. Oh, he's gone left all the way. Is that Akafan Merv with the angry warthog snorting his way to the try line? And he's got it unchallenged. Dylan Lades was uh, part of the earlier tackle. There was no one flinging at fullback. And that suddenly has put a massive gap between the two teams. The angry warthog just steamrolling his way through a, a gap the size of the English Channel. Well, I, I don't know. Francois Fenter was out of position there and so too Andre Esterhazen but Krubus Reinach must have had eyes in the back of his head to see the angry warthog ranging up from that range. I don't know how he got this pass away, he seems to have passed it through the body 
of Carly Zadi somehow, but uh, quite a run there by the, uh, by the hooker, Akafana Merva. And Western Province are celebrating. There he is, the young, the young man, uh, looking only slightly less angry than usual, but nonetheless furious. Andre Pollard, lining up the easiest kick of goal so far. Probably do this with his eyes closed. Doesn't risk it, splits the uprights, extra two points for Andre Pollard, extra two points for Western Province. 28 points to seven, and uh, you have to start wondering whether there's a way back into this game for KZN. Only 18, uh, 18 minutes left in the game, and if they don't try something else, they're going to be going home with their tail between the legs. Well, it's a high ball, well challenged this time. Sintam and Jay-Z, the, again, the one to gather it. They've gone wide. Wes Kursen, he chooses to kick it. Probably not the worst idea, given the, the position the province are in, but it's gone to Chiba Daimani. Offloading there to Fenter, uh, sorry, Esther Hazen. The Sharks, they need to consolidate possession and come up with some points very quickly because this deficit is not going to... Well, you have to wonder whether that might not be a decisive turning point in this game as we should probably turn it, off, uh, turn it over at the ruck. But as I say that, Sharks turn it back over. Roscoe Speckman in there with a the loose, uh, loose pass to his right. Now, uh, Dylan Richardson playing scrum half, trying to show and go, releasing. but they're on their own 20 meter, 22 meter, and again, Dylan Richardson. That's his second penalty for the same offense. Well, you have to wonder whether coach manager Ant Lake could have foreseen that coming. He had the option to take Bismarck to see an experienced uh, campaigner, um, but opted instead, instead for the young up and coming Dylan Richardson. And he may be kicking himself now. Andre Pollard doesn't waste any time with this one. Just a little bit of salt in the wound there with, an, I would say, unnecessary three points, but that's over the 30, meter, the 30 point mark as they go to 31. Sharks remain stagnant on seven. 67 minutes on the clock. Deficit, 24 points. Can they go at about two points a minute? Seems unlikely. Sintaman Jay-Z gained the man to collect the kickoff. Sharks again challenging that for a turnover, but unable to get it this time. It's like Akafana Merva or perhaps Chris Clitty there at scrum half. Western Province securing, going blindside. There's been space for days on this blindside. This time it's Andre Pollard. Well, you question the game management to kick the ball away there, but a fantastic chase and almost, almost got there by Western Province. Uh, but uh, the Sharks defense, cool as cucumber. And they do get uh, free possession, I might say, with that Ralph. aimless kick from Andre Pollard. Nine. Choosing to scrum. I suppose their best chance at retaining possession, but uh, possession isn't going to help them. They can't do anything with it. Good shove on there by the Sharks pack. The province looking a little bit tired. And uh, the, the minutes are being chewed up as the Sharks pack strains into the void. Oscar Speckman. Some nice hands there between the Sharks forwards, but ultimately only gaining a few meters. Tough to click right there, but letting off his name and play scrum half. Here comes Ron Ackerman. He had numbers on the outside, but uh, was unable to find the support runner. Sharks have secured possession. Still plenty of numbers on the blind side. Here we go, Money Lubbock, ranging on the outside. Chesney Colby is quick enough to get there, and does so, but likely doesn't stop him in time. I wonder if the TMO won't have a look at that, but perhaps it was just my camera angle that made it look closer than it really was. Fantastic awareness there by the Sharks to go to the blind side. Good pace, good focus by Money Lubbock to finish up the try. It was Sukubu Zenochi who saw the gap and exploited it. Money Lebok, well, let's have a look. No, nothing in a clear try for the Sharks. Happy to award that. Chesley Colby, maybe a bit lackadaisical there. He got sucked in, but he saw, the, he saw it coming, and he, I would have thought he had enough pace to close that down, but perhaps not. Well taken try by Money Lebok. I would say one of the few backs for the Sharks who have shown up for this game, to be honest. And he will now get an opportunity to add the two clock just past 75 minutes now he pulls the kick to the right and isn't that just a summary of the Sharks night so far good try but one step backwards 31 points to 12 uh, it would take a miracle and perhaps even uh, something more than a miracle for the Sharks to win this as the clock ticks on to 76 minutes Javier Pollard kicking short happy to give the ball away get a step to Toya taking it up oh fantastic run by Dylan Richardson I believe getting it off again to Manny Lebok this time Chesney Colby is taking revenge 
and <laughs> he's going to see the last few minutes of this game out on the sidelines. Jason Colby doesn't understand the concept of a high tackle. It's hard to when you're only four feet tall. But, uh, well, <laughs> the Sharks will have a chance to get some glory points here in garbage time. They tap and go. Roscoe Speck, oh, sorry, Oxen Chair thinks he has something on. Makes a bit of territory. The Sharks playing up against a uh, man short. Carly Sadi, been a fantastic player for them in the group stages. They need to go wide if they want to score here. They keep it with Fort. Oxen Chair taking it up, but a good hit from Grayson Province. Money Lebok now. Now Speckman stepping his way through the line, unable to make it any further, and a full pass thrown by Speckman. Well, I think that was probably the last chance to score in this game. Western Province will now have a defensive scrum and an opportunity to wind down the clock. Crouch. And they will, I think, Nine. safe to say, be walking away with the Elite Rugby Banter Set. Curry Cup 2020. One last set piece for the, the expected champions. Secure possession of the scrum. A valiant effort by the Sharks, but uh, ultimately too many mistakes, too much ill-discipline. And there it is, Province opting to do the responsible thing, kick the ball out, and you can see how pleased they are. I think they look happy. Um, Pierce Kuma doesn't seem to care too much. There's a few packs, uh, pats on the backs for the forwards for the backs. Uh, particularly uh, Jan Surfentain, Jan Surfentain seems to be getting in there with the celebrations. Akafina Merva, well, he's been t he'll be telling everyone about his try tonight, of course. Four tries for Western Province. Akafina Merva, two for Duan Funa Merva, so three for the family, one by Mahogane Pollard. No missed kicks by Pollard. Two tries for the Sharks. Notcher and Libok took them very, very well. I, I would say they were two of the better tries of the, of the game, actually, but Libok unable to convert them and simply not enough opportunities for the Sharks to get back in. And I think the headline uh, stat there has to be possession. 64% in favor of of Western Province, only 36 for the Sharks. 11 line breaks for Western Province, 7 for the Sharks, so a good return on their possession for, with line breaks, but unfortunately just not enough to see the game through. And uh, interestingly, Province making 50% more tackles than the Sharks, and there you have it. Congratulations, I won Lead Rugby ca uh, Banter Curry Cup 2015. Okay, uh, that makes the selection of Dylan Richardson even more reckless, considering he would have only been about 17 years old at that stage. But thank you very much for everyone who uh, watched the channel and uh, enjoyed the, the season. Um, we hope to bring you more content in the next week or two. And uh, please feel free to give us your stinging criticism on Twitter or in the comment section or on Facebook or face to face if you're prepared to risk catching COVID. And uh, enjoy what's left of the weekend.